What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video here on Fantasy Football Scout. And today we're back doing transfer trends. So going to take a look at two players that have been transferred in quite heavily and two players that have been transferred out fairly heavily. And kind of discuss why that's happening, whether it's a good decision, bad decision, um, and whether there's a different kind of course of action that could be taken. So we'll start off with Matt Doherty, 55,204 transfers in for him this week. 6.2 million he's up to now, started the season at 6. Um, and I've got to be honest, when I saw that price at the start of the season, I was kind of put off quite heavily uh, with backing him. I didn't think it was that good of a price for a Wolves defender, but he's kind of making almost a mockery of that. Um, at the moment, especially in the in the kind of recent um, game weeks that he's had. So in the last four, he's scored 6, 6, 10 and 12, so 34 total. And we have seen him go through spells of this before, especially last season. He went for a really big spell near the start of the season and did okay for periods after that, but not necessarily for the rest of the season. So it's kind of a bit patchy. Maybe this is the time to catch him on a hot streak, even though you've already missed quite a few points there of course um and the other thing i suppose which is making people maybe jump over obviously a lot of it depends on your team and team value and stuff like that but double liverpool defense maybe not looking as quite as watertight as it was they've still got a few good fixtures to come you'd expect them to keep some clean sheets along the way of course but uh, they didn't look great against watford at all and they didn't do that well against west ham in terms of defensive ability either so we know they've still got attack and returns in their locker Obviously, players like Matt Doherty and Alonso, etc., they're a bit cheaper as well and also offer um, attacking potential. So you can see why people are going there. And also, the fixtures are pretty decent over the next four. Brighton at home, West Ham away, Bournemouth at home, and Villa away. And obviously, they do play in game week 31 guaranteed. So we're expecting that to be a pretty big blank game week, which we'll know more about once the FA Cup fixtures are done this week. But Doherty is going to play Bournemouth at home in game week 31. So again, I can see why people are doing it. He's playing as a wing back, but he's basically a winger with the positions he takes up. He's always in the box, it feels like. Um, and exactly where you'd want a winger to be, apart from you get him has a defender. And then the last four matches, so seven shots inside the box, no other defender is higher than that. Um, so seven shots in the box is the highest. He's sixth of the chances created as well. So he's creating a few chances, but it's probably more there um, as goal threat. In that same time, so looking at the other Wolves defenders, you got Sice has had six shots inside the box, and uh, he's also highest out of Doherty, Bolly, and Sice for clearance box blocks and interceptions, um, which does help towards bonus points. And he's also higher, Sice this is, on baseline bonus as well. So if they get a clean sheet with no attack and returns, you'd think that Sice would kind of be right up there um, in terms of getting the bonus out of defenders. Bolly on the other hand has only had one shot inside the box and is worse for baseline bonus. So at this point, I, I'm an owner of Bolly, and I actually think I've made a mistake there. Either you spend the money on Doherty and get the, um, you know, kind of a winger master's a defender, or you go for Sice instead of Bolly because he's getting more shots inside the box and is cheaper as well. So I don't think Doherty in is a good, uh, sorry, a bad pick. Uh, I think it really depends on your team value. I'd, I'd really struggle to fit him in. I've only got one Liverpool defender as it is. If you're blessed with team value, you're happy with the rest of the team, then I think it absolutely looks like, looks like a great pick. Next four fixtures are really good. Plays in game week 31, extremely attacking. I don't really see these points drying up over the next four. So next up is Ishmael Saar, 54,038 transfers in so far. And that's probably unsurprising given the score he got at the weekend. 19 points against Liverpool, two goals, one assist, three bonus points, and even a clean sheet point because the Liverpool front three just could not hit the target at all. Uh, and, and played quite poorly and Watford were really good in that game and deserved their win thoroughly so great result for Saar and you can see why he's being transferred in um, Nigel Pearson took charge in game week 16 so Saar had a few games before that but the majority of the time is under Pearson so I had a look from game week 16 to 23 which is when Saar got um, injured originally so you can do kind of game week range within the fantasy football scout members area if you want to kind of sign up and take a look at yourself um, and in that time he had 19 shots inside the box which was only beaten uh, by Mohamed Salah in terms of midfielders. So he's already got pretty decent credentials even before uh, this Liverpool game that's just happened. In that time, two goals, three assists. That's five returns in eight games, which is pretty decent. I don't think it's that much of a coincidence that Watford kind of struggled a bit while he wasn't in the team. Obviously got 21 minutes against Man United in the last game week before Liverpool. Uh, but properly back in the side now, Liverpool looks to be fully fit and, and kind of raring to go. I think next four fixtures are not perfect, but they're not awful either. Um, and obviously, you've got to take into account his price. He's quite cheap at 6.2 million. So it's Palace away, Leicester at home, Burnley away, and Southampton at home. And like Matt Doherty, he's also going to play in game week 31. 
uh, which is another reason a lot of people are looking to bring him in. Um, there's a few kind of other things I would say that are kind of going for him and Watford at the moment. So obviously Watford fighting for their lives, definitely in a relegation battle. Uh, and it is hard to put an exact figure on how much that helps the team. Uh, but at this time of the season, we probably do look more for reasons why a player is going to look to perform than not. And obviously no one's going to go out on the pitch and just and just not bother for the sake of it. But relegation teams, teams fighting for top four and stuff like that is kind of where we want to pick the players from. So Saar definitely got something to play for there. Like I said, a, a fixture in game week 31 as well. I think given his price, I can see why people are bringing him in. I don't think there's any real reason not to. You know, with Doherty, you have like Bolly and Sice that maybe you can consider for less money. But for Saar, I don't think that really is the case. Um, I know a few people are disappointed by Perez and Barnes not getting anything against Norwich, but I wouldn't necessarily be too quick to switch them with Aston Villa at home up next. But a 6.2 million Sarah is a great price. Obviously, Triori, we're going to talk about it in a minute, but he's got another um, or kind of a reoccurrence of a shoulder injury. So around that kind of price, Sarah does look to be one of the better bets. A fixture in game week 31, Watford got something to play for. can definitely see why people are transferring in, and I'm going to look at it too. We really might have to rename the series um, from Transfer Trends to the Jamie Vardy Show because he's shown up, I think, every week for the kind of three weeks that I've done it so far. But he has been quite heavily transferred out. So 201,826 managers have got rid of him already. Um, and obviously it's relevant this week because he missed out the Norwich game. But it is Aston Villa at home. But that Norwich game and missing that is obviously fueling this. Maybe people go into the likes of Jota, Calvert-Lewin. Maybe even looking at Aubameyang for this week against West Ham. Um, but I think it's kind of interesting how that Norwich game went. I think we've all been kind of saying... Uh, the Norwich have kind of improved defensively, especially at home. But yet we still back Leicester players for this game. And obviously he missed out and indeed he missed out. And I think that's part of the reason why Leicester has struggled recently. I know we, we talked about Ndidi a lot and I don't think he's the only reason for Leicester's troubles. But he is a big part of that team. They do miss him when he's not playing. So the fact that he played a few minutes in that Norwich game, hopefully he's now back a, uh, and available basically to play every single week. And Vardy's only got a calf injury. It does sound like he's going to be back for the Villa game as well. And they definitely need him because they've not had a good run of results. So in the last seven matches, they've only beaten West Ham at home. They've lost to Southampton, Burnley, drawn with Chelsea and Wolves. And obviously they lost to Man City and Norwich as well. So it's really not a good run of form. But given that it's a calf injury, it's against a Villa team that loves to concede chances. They've been doing it all season. I would probably actually be looking at keeping him. Now, obviously, you know, it depend, depends on individual uh, transfers and teams. Like, if you're looking to get Jotter in to free up some money or you want to kind of bring Calvert-Lewin in because he's in such good form and, again, it would save a bit of money, then fair enough. And, you know, potentially Aubameyang against West Ham is a better option. But I think that Villa fixture is so good. If he's back, indeed he's back as well, um, then I think it's probably worth keeping him for. Uh, and then reassessing after that. I think those two will make the difference. Uh, and I think, you know, I've already spoken about Perez and Barnes. I'm not too worried about them just yet. And look, if it still doesn't go the way of Leicester after the Villa game, then maybe it's time to get rid. But I just don't know if there's enough um, kind of upside to sell him right now. Um, although, you know, fully get that if you've kept him over all these fixtures, it's extremely frustrating for him to miss out on that Norwich game. But if he's back for Villa, I think he looks good. And I think people might regret transferring him out. If it's for a cheaper player, then fair enough. Last up, we have Adama Traore, 58,085 transfers out already. And as an owner of Traore, um, I can definitely see why people are doing this. It was very encouraging to see him start against Spurs. Obviously, it meant that the 3-5-2 wasn't completely locked in every single game. And once they play that formation, it's probably him that's going to be missing out. I don't think he's going to go to right wing back at the moment, not in the kind of form that Doherty is in, like we've already spoken about. So it was kind of encouraging to see him start. And the fact they switched back to 3-4-3... Obviously, extremely frustrating that his shoulder went again. It was dislocated. Um, there are some quotes from uh, Nuno. He basically said that he's worried about him. He struggles with it. It's a lot of pain. Um, so that is enough cause for concern to me, essentially, to say that, yeah, these 58,000 transfers are absolutely justified. The problem we've got going forward is he's struggling with an injury. Uh, we can't necessarily be sure he's going to start every single week anyway because of this formation switch. Look, maybe it won't happen. Maybe they'll keep playing 3-4-3. Um, it was just that one fixture they wanted to play the 3-5-2, but they have used it in Europe, and it has worked well. Jota's in some really good form as well right now. Um, and ahead of these good runner fixtures, I already spoke about for Matt Doherty. Obviously, he has the same fixtures as um, Chari. I can see why people like, wouldn't want to take him out. Like, I don't want to. I'd love to play him against Brian at home. But I just can't be sure he's going to start there. So I think you could make a switch. Like If you already tripled up on walls, you could get rid of him and go to Jota up front, or double defense might be an option. So you get Doherty in, but you still get one of the cheaper options as well. 
Um, obviously then, you know, we've got the other players that we've already talked about. I still think Barnes and Perez will be good, especially for this week. Um, and you could also go to Saar as well, who you know is going to play in game week 31. Doesn't seem to have these injury concerns that Troy has. So he's still very cheap. And if he does play, uh, we know he can get us points. But I just think going forward, there's too much doubt about whether he's going to start every single week. I get that this kind of shoulder injury is one of those ones where they can just kind of put it back in and, and wait till it pops out again. But that can't be good for him going forward. And at some point, surely there's something more they're going to have to do with that as well. And maybe they wait till the end of the season. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But um, it can't be good for this to keep happening and being in so much pain. So we'll see what happens. Um, I don't think he's necessarily a rush to get rid of. Uh, but like if I had him in my team this week, I wouldn't like to start him because the problem with him is if he doesn't start and he's on the bench, he pretty much always comes on. So he's susceptible to a one pointer. So you can definitely see why people are getting out. I think Sar's probably the number one choice. Um, probably yeah, a good time to get rid of him, even though it's good fixtures. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give the video a thumbs up. Much appreciated. And subscribe if you're new to the Fantasy Football Scout channel. There'll be plenty more content to come this week and every week running up to the end of the season. And leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think of these transfers in and out. Um, is it a good decision that people are making? Are they being hasty with the likes of Vardy? Should we give Triary one more chance? Let me know below. Otherwise, I will catch you next time. Cheers all.